Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lenosa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So we were recently on a video shoot in central Illinois and stopped by Chris Kreider's house just to see how everything was going. We had received three and one half inches of rain in the previous 24 hours. Uh, I just want to kind of pop in and see how everything was going. We managed. It was a little bit muddy, but they were still very welcoming to us. Now you may know Chris and Aaron Kreider from a couple of our previous interviews we've had with them on Lenos the Farms Live. If you haven't seen them or if you don't know about their farm or about Kreider Farms, make sure to check out our video segments with them. Basically, Chris and Aaron are working with crossbreeding dorpers to uh, various wool breeds to get a superior market product that they are able to sell through their local farmer's market. I wanted to see what was going on with my own eyes, so I stopped in for a quick visit. Now, don't worry. This is a very short visit, but we will be going back to visit them real soon and get a full farm tour. But in the meantime, we think this will hold you over just fine. So you got both of us? So, so it, in this pen, we've got uh, our two full-blood dorpers okay. that we've kept back and then a, a fat lamb. And then this is the one we call our $10,000 lamb. And why is that? Because uh, I went to the Dorper National last year and I was trying to buy good genetics. Right. And we bought a almost $4,000 U. Uh-huh and a $6,000 ram. And the ram died two weeks after bringing it home. Oh no. There was that one day there at the beginning of May that got to like 110. Yep, yeah. Well, I didn't, so, you know, I've been around sheep all the time, but I didn't realize that he wasn't drinking the water. Oh no. But everybody else was fine. Right. He was in a group with about six ewes. Uh -huh. I didn't want to overwork him, but I just wanted him together with something. Right. We came home, I think we were in the field still, because Erin gets home and she's like, I think it's dead. I uh, think it's dead. I was uh, like, you're, you're lying, right? Because <laughs> oh. the couple days before, he, he didn't give us any signs, but right. ever since we got him, he'd lay on his side like he was dead anyway. So you're right. like, freak out. Right, right. Well, he, he was dead. <laughs> right. And so he got one you, the three, the one we bought at the National, he hit it. Oh, thank and God. And so... That's our ten thousand dollar lamb, is what wow. I call it. Wow. So how how old are these? Uh, so these dorpers? are both falls. Um, okay. September's. Okay. When you're looking at these these dorpers, um, what are you seeing growth characteristics wise? Do they hit it real hard right up the yes. shoot, and then they so, grow, 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 and then they kind of and slow. then they lull off. So like one thing I always find interesting, you go to the Dorper National. They don't do spring lamb classes. Right. They're like fallborns or yearlings. Okay. Uh, and I don't know if that's just because of the way they grow, because these, they'll pop to 60 pounds mm -hmm. really, really fast. And then there's like a lull there from like 60 to 100. It takes a little while. Okay. And then if you can get them over that hump, then they gain a little bit more. Now, I don't think that the, you know, your mature dorpers aren't, aren't that big, though. I mean, you're talking 120 to 160 right. at the very big end. Right. So, so you can you can really take advantage of this and hit lightweight market, lightweight really market up. fast. So we're initially that was what I was thinking I was going to do, but the farmers market's been good, so I need a little bigger lamb. Right. And we can, we'll show you the other pins. That's why we're kind of doing the polypay use with the Dorper Bucks. Okay, yeah. And I just the hybrid bigger, the and liveliness and the hardiness of those lambs is just incredible. So we had our first set of Dorper Cross lambs born yesterday and went out 10 p.m., checked on all the animals, came out the next morning at 6 o'clock, and she had already had the babies. They were completely dry. They were up and running with the yes. other sheep. So I was like, whoa. Pretty much every one of our Dorpers was exactly that way. Wow. We've, we've got a few black lambs. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. We've had a lot of problems with them. Right. And then we have one group that will be – uh, a door sit on some polypays. I don't know how that that's, doesn't start till about next week. Right. So yeah, we were really impressed. If that's going to be the case, uh, we're 
going to have to rethink what we're doing uh, because <laughs> yeah. that was really now, impressive. Now, luckily, I insured the Ram. Okay. And I got paid, and I went and found another one. There you go. So anybody on your video wants it, you can insure your sheep. Okay. What is, uh, tell me about insuring sheep. Like, so, why would somebody want to do that, and how would they go about doing that? So uh, there's only a handful of providers. This one was based out of U United Kingdom, but it's a local guy here that provided it. He told me after that he wasn't going to do any more sheep. But it's like, uh, uh, they do it for bull sales. Very, okay. very common for bull sales, especially I did it because I knew I was going in and I was going to spend a lot of money. Right. And I was trying to protect myself to the, exactly what happened. Right. And so typically, I think the standard is like 20% of the sale price. Okay. And that's what you got to pay. Or somewhere, some, they're all a little bit different, but it's right. about 20% of the right. sale price. But if you're going to drop six grand or, on more, a, yeah. or more on a on you a Think animal. about when people buy $100,000 bulls. You want something to protect that because sure. you don't want to come home and it be sterile. or Right. Or, Absolutely. Now, mine is just mortality. You can, sometimes your insurance provider will provide some insurance, but that's only it's right. very rare. On gotcha. That. But mortality... They do it. All right. So, well, let's go take a look at some of the adults. You got some nice looking hay here. Yeah. What do you got here? So this is just an alfalfa grass mix. Um, Boy, this was baled, right? Yeah, that's wow. probably third cutting. Yeah. So uh, this is like, <laughs> this is basically textbook. Like when you look at hay that's been baled, right? Yeah. That's what you want to see. Well, we're pretty lucky because we do it all ourselves. Yeah. And then uh, all the leaf that's still on it. Yeah, yeah. That's where guys will really mess that up. Bad. Yeah, I'm just lucky that we do our own because I wouldn't want to buy it. <laughs> yeah, and you know Shred. when, and if you got guys doing custom bailing for you, sometimes it's hard to get them out there well, at the right time. So we, when you do it yourself, you know. Yeah, we we do quite a. We have somebody do custom round bailing for us, and okay, and that's been really difficult because everybody's quit quit doing it in this area. I, I think we finally found somebody. Lots of people are going to wet wrap now because it's just well, e it's easier. easier. I thought about it, but I just. It's just too much to handle right now. Since we, we do our own, it's kind of a little right. bit easier. The other thing that people are having issues with with the wet wrap is, is if they can't go through it fast enough after you open it up, yep. you know, we'll get farms that have a couple hundred head. When they th open it up, they know the animals are going to burn through it in yeah. a day. Yep. You know, some of the universities and stuff are saying, if you open that thing up and they can't eat it all in two days, don't even do it because now you're getting listeria, yeah. all kinds of other well, issues. I, so I, I've heard molding is a big issue, oh. and especially if... You have you somehow don't realize it, and there's been poked, and yep. then you're going to have a oh, rotten bale anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we've got two pins here. This pin is uh, the first half of the polypay with a couple of random dorpers in there. Okay. Uh, we bought these since the farmers market was going so well. We bought a group of 50 polypays, mm -hmm. and uh, this is the first group of them. And we bought them back. Uh, we got them at first of July. Okay. Uh, and so we've been growing them out. Nice. And uh, they're, this group won't start till about March 15th. The other group will start March 1st. I did notice something interesting with our, now we had a white face dorper that, that lambed out for us. Yeah. So I was used to the bagging characteristics of my wool sheep to where it was like my door sits, they'll bag out. Yeah. And then I got like a month, you know, it was like, it was like no, my- it was instant. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure that one right there we got we bought it off online sale. So she must have been bred a little yeah, earlier. Yeah, she she's due. I'm assuming next week. Okay. Probably. Yeah. But we need to probably we're probably move her kick her over into that group because it, it was just easiest to throw her in. It in was so it was so bad that I I honestly thought we had missed them. I thought they were still open. Yeah. I'm like, well, they're not bred <laughs> um, because they just weren't. They don't up. show near as much. No, no, no. I mean, unless they're an older you, obviously. Right. Uh, so when you're breeding your dorpers on a, like a polypay or a white face or any wool breed for that matter, what are you seeing? Are they still mostly hair? Are you getting a wool cap it's on the back? It's a mix of mix. It's a mix of both. You'll okay. get some that, I don't really feel like you got one that's a little bit of both. It's either it sticks with the wool trait or it sticks with the hair trait. So we just had twins and one of them has a full wool cap on the back and the other one's solid hair. Yeah. So it just either or. Okay. Yeah, and you'll see that in the lambs when we get over there. How about the black in the head? Are you seeing that? A lot of with that first generation, they stick to black and white. 
Okay. I mean, like they look like a dairy cow or, right. or a natural colored. Okay. Now you'll get some that will be more white, but I would say it's less. Wouldn't you agree, Aaron? You can come on over, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron's like, no. no. <laughs> so you did. You were like a rock star on our on on our uh, online conversations, and then now you're I like. Asked you questions. I had an answer. <laughs> <laughs> how do you like your? How do you guys like your? Um, Round bale feeder where they push it in. So we have like, two styles yeah, here. Like the, the, that kind of style over that one. How come? Um, they can get at it a little bit easier? They kind of make a mess and kind of um, take that off more than that kind of style. This is a more of a hook yeah. style and they can pop that hook off. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> if they eat too much on one side, the whole thing will fall to the side. Uh. Uh, but I think that those are a little bit heavier. Is this Seidel or who? Yeah, yeah, and that's Ketchum. Okay. Now Ketchum, I think I I think they're still in business, but I used to do quite a. I used to help Kim before he passed. Okay. Off and on. Okay. So, but you would have to say this one you like a little I mean, bit better. Right now I do. Right. Yeah. In in theory, if I had that on concrete, that one might be a hair better. Right. Because it's not as much waste. Awesome. But you're gonna waste no matter what with a round bale. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is the older group. This is what's left of them. There are a couple young ones, and then uh, she's high right there is the, the dorper that we bought last year. Okay. So that's the mother of the lamb in the barn. Good deal. So and then her her dad just got out of sheep, so that's why we got several black ones. Okay. We bought his Shropshire's. Okay. Which a lot of that comes from Rick Adams. Okay. Or. Or that area. Okay. <laughs> Look at those babies. So this is uh, F1, basically. It's, yep. Okay. Ba basically an F1. That's an older polypay there, and then we've got some. So that's the other group of polypays over there that will start next week. Okay. And then this is the one. This is a lamb pin. They probably got more inside here. You guys are drier than we are, considering we just got about three inches of rain. And we got three and a half, is what oh, they said. Oh, gosh. Yeah, but it, it soaked it up pretty good. Yeah, no, we're on, I was telling Aaron, we're on hard blue clay where we're at, and man, it does not drain at all. And there, there's my oops. The heat, that one was in the fat pen, and then last week it had a lamb. <laughs> so, yep. These are nice looking lambs. How old are they? Uh, those would be no more than a month, month and a half at the most. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm telling you, they grow. Holy they holy really smokes. pop to 50, 60 pounds. I mean, yeah. really fast. Wow! I'll, I'm gonna go uh, see if I can scare them out. Okay. Here. Yeah, yeah, you're all in here. Come on. So her, right there. The those are F2s because she's an F1 from last year. Okay. And then there is one full blood, uh, full blood right there, Dorper. Okay. So, gotcha. Wow. Look at those two black ones back there. Yeah. Those are nice. What are, are those? What so are those? that one obviously got hit by the Dorper, and then that one's a Dorper dor on on a Dorper. So that'd be F two. That one's a nice looking lamb. That solid, that jet black one. Yeah. Holy smokes. Actually. I think, is that, that's not the one that we didn't band, or that one's inside, isn't it? Is that a ram lamb? That uh, jet black one? I think it might be, but I think uh -huh. I banded that one. Okay. There's one in there that I thought was better, I didn't. Really? Okay. Didn't band. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a nice so, uh, long flat back on him, doesn't he? Now, the only thing is, I, these dorpers tend to really moderate on frame size, so if you're going to you grow over 120 pounds, you're gonna really have a hard time. So that's right. why I think the cross with the polys works to get them just a hair bigger. How is how is the milking ability on the pure dorpers compared to like what we're used to on a wool, on like a uh, dorset or a I, poly bay? We haven't had any problems with the dorpers milking whatsoever. Like, Look at this dude. So this is the dorper that we bought to replace the, so the one that we bought he was quite a bit bigger, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would say he was probably one of the bigger framed ones at Duncan at their national sales. So this one, I got off a guy in Missouri that uh, he does primarily just grass-raised dorpers. Okay. And uh, this one was a, he bought it at the national sale the prior year as a fall lamb. Okay. 
and uh, but the Dorpers have ratings. Uh, they type them. Right. So it's like five, four, three, two, and one, and four and five are desirable. Okay. Five, obviously the best, and then three is more of a commercial grade, I think, and two and ones, and that goes back to breed, character, muscling, uh, confirmation. People have invested a lot of money in those full blood South African traits. So, do I blame them? No, you better fight for what you want. Right. Absolutely. Um, so, no, he, I'd say he's pretty good. Maybe uh, that's your typical Dorper. I'd like to see him a little bit, maybe a bigger frame, right. but. Not too crazy. Right. Now, this guy here... Is a Dorset. He, he, that is a... That's a club lamb daddy. He looks like a club lamb daddy I, to me. Would you say? He's actually not club lamb... I mean, I, he, maybe you could use him, but... Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm looking from, at his length and body. He's an NSIP buck from North Carolina State University. Really? Yeah. And my dad got him off of a sale. He's like, can you use him? I was like, sure. Yeah. I mean, he's so, he's got... For as big as he is, he's got a nice tubular body. Yeah. He's nice and long and flat. Um, I mean, obviously he's he's not perfect, but he's a nice looking he's a nice looking buck. Yeah. Is that a Tunis? <laughs> yes. There is he, okay. there is a story we, here. We bought him as a fat lamb. Yeah. Right. And we didn't use him. Right. I didn't want him in with right. anything else. So for our viewers watching that want to know what the secret is on Kreider Farms, <laughs> it's they've got a tunis in the back shed that they, they're they like, no, 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 really. Red, red Dorper. Red Dorper, yeah. No, no, go. it's not. He's just here for fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's our Red Dorper. <laughs> how in the hell did you? So how in the hell did you end up with a tunis buck? Well, again, tell me the story. Well, when you're trying to find groups for farmers markets, you can't always be picky. Right. I mean, you want good land. And, and the group that he came with were finished right. It's just Honestly, timing wise, I, I kept him because I thought maybe somebody would come in and Christmas yeah. and want a lamb. And I just didn't get one. Honestly, I wanted he's a whole one, lamb. He, he's one of the best looking tunis books I've ever yeah, seen. So he was showed. He was clipped out yeah. at one time. So that's, yeah. He was showed. So yeah, he a looks buddy nice. of mine that has tunis. I, I actually had tunis growing in 4-H. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. so I won a Tunis at the Maryland Sheep, Wool, uh, Sheep and Wolf Festival, uh -huh. and then I had Tunis for a couple years. Okay. And then so I had sold my U-U's to the gal, uh, and she, uh, when I asked for some rams, or some lambs, that's what one of them that they had. Boy, uh, you, it's hard to cross a Tunis on anything, <laughs> because it seemed to me like even... Even if you can get all the red out of them, if the light catches them just right on their leg wool, yes. you'll see that red. You'll see that red <laughs> color pop on them. But that's that's. We'll just funny. call it a red dorper. It's a red dorper. It's a red dorper. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, thank you for taking the time to show us around. We'll come back. Um, we'll come back at another time and do yeah. more of a. Once it warms up, I think my my camera lay is getting ready to turn into a popsicle. But uh, <laughs> I don't blame you. Awesome. Well, thanks, Chris. I thank appreciate you, you taking yep. time to show no us around. Problem.